tutorial I'd like to look at this little section down here which is called the input and output levels. So you've got input levels, output levels and you've got little sliders, three sliders on the input and two on the output levels and you've also got this black level, grey level and white level. Now just to go with the housekeeping here, black level refers to this slider down here, grey level refers to this slider here, white level refers to this slider here and these sliders here, these this hot text, this zero down here refers to this point, 255 refers to this point, and 1 refers to the gamma slider, the grey slider in the middle, often referred to as the gamma slider because it's the mid-grey point. So this is a pixel value, okay, so it's saying the pixel value of 0 is pure black. And this here, 255, is a pixel value of 255, which is this slider, is pure white and a value of 1 is pure grey. So the pixel values from total black to total white in our shot go from 0 to 255 and the midpoint is 1. Okay so if we look at the shot over here we can see that we've got things that should be white like his collar, things that should be black like just inside his bow tie or possibly the base of this teapot here although we might not be able to find a true black point because there isn't really anything that is truly black because even though some of these things look black in reality they're probably nearer grey than pure black and who knows what is supposed to be pure grey I could click and actually select a grey point by choosing this picker here and trying to say take the grey of his hair or something and you can never tell if it's going to work so what's this all about? okay what we need to do is we need to tell Premiere Pro what should be pure white so that it can say all the pixels from that value and above are pushed to pure white. So this collar at the moment actually isn't pure white. And if I take the picker to take the white level and I go over it, it takes it back to its previous level. Okay, as it's ignoring everything else that I've done and taking it back to how it originally was. And if we look over here at the white levels, you'll see that in the white box when I click on it, I've got something that's slightly purely off-white and it's pulled this slider down to 239. And what it's saying is that the pixels here were 239, therefore every pixel that is 239 and above, up to 255, has now been pushed to pure white. Okay, so I'll say that again. When I clicked on the collar, the pixel value, which was supposed to be pure white, was actually not pure white, it was 239, so it was less than pure white. And we've said to Premiere Pro, okay, every pixel value that's as white as this shirt or whiter must be pushed to pure white and to do that it took this little slider and it pulled it down and that kind of brightens the shot up a bit now the black level if we go to say the base of this teapot and we were to click at the base of this teapot and it was say at 16 or something it would say well that's supposed to be pure black therefore all the pixels that are at that level and below must be pushed to pure black and it does that by pulling the slider up so let's just try that Let's go to a really black bit, just say, just there. Now, you can see that that's actually brown. What I've clicked on was brown, but look at the contrast change it's made. It's made the whole image a lot darker, because it said that the brown, as it actually was, should have been black, and so it's pushed that pixel value to black. Now, if it's overdone, and you think it's too much, you can always take these sliders and pull them back a bit. So that's how it originally was, and then I clicked in there and I pulled it back up and it came up to something like that. And you can see that that's given it quite a big contrast change, it's darkened the image down quite a bit. Now the one in the middle, the reason I'm a bit sceptical about this one is because how do you define what is absolute grey? Watch the difference, when I actually click on this one and I say take the grey of his hair because that's supposed to be grey, it can make the image, well actually that's not too bad, but it was, if you actually look at it, more brown than anything else. And this is actually, the reason it's not made a lot of difference is you can see the values not change much. But you can make a choice about the contrast of your shot by pulling this slider. You've got your white values, and you've got your black values, which has actually made the shot a lot crisper. Notice here on the RGB parade as well, it's pulled the colour range all the way up to 100 and down from 0. So we've actually got a really wide luminance range inside these colours, which means we've got a really well balanced shot now. But I can also, if I start to slide this up, I'll make the whole thing lighter, and you'll see that the pixels in the middle will start to go up. And if I pull it the other way, they go down. So if I pull it towards the white, you'll see the whole thing gets brighter, and all the pixels kind of move up in the middle. 
And if I pull it the opposite direction, pull it down, see that the whole thing gets darker, but all the pixels have been pulled down. But I've still got my white point and I've still got my black point. So I've got a really well contrast shot now and I've got rid of that colour cast. So if I go up and I just turn off the fast colour corrector, that's how the shot started off. And then the first thing we did was the white balance and then we did setting our white points, our black points and our grey points, although we fiddled around with the grey points and we ended up with that, which is a much better shot. But I can still make a choice, I can still turn around and say, do you know what, I don't think that's bright enough and I can go in and change, say, the gamma slider or possibly even move the white sliders. So that's the input levels. What's output levels about? Well, sometimes a broadcast system won't cope with pure black or pure white. So at the moment, what's happening is we're saying that from 22.1, this slider is at 22.1, so every pixel with a value of 22.1 down to 0 has been pushed to pure black and will be output at pure black, and output at pure black is 0. But as I say, some broadcast systems won't cope with pure black. So you can say, OK, well, if it won't cope with pure black, we can pull this up to, say, 16. Now, some broadcast systems, as I say, need it to be something like 16 before they'll actually cope and it'll be legal. So although I've got the input side of things sorted out, the system can't cope with pure black, so I pull the slider up. Likewise, I've got my whites from 239 up to 255. They're all pure white. And at the moment, all of them will show as 255. But if my system won't cope with pure white, I can pull the output slider down and all of those will be mapped to a darker level. Now, I don't often play with the output levels, although I do occasionally when something's perhaps a little bit blown out in one color channel. But I do play with the input sliders a great deal. This is the equivalent to levels in After Effects. There is actually a levels effect in Premiere Pro, but it is very difficult to use. I will demonstrate it a bit later on, but it's not a particularly easy effect to use. So this is kind of like the levels effect, and it really helps you to get your shot from being quite grey to being well contrast and having a good decision about how bright or dark it is. In the next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to deal with the skin tones. So we're going to make sure that this man's skin tone is correct. And we're going to use the vector scope and we're going to use another instance of the fast color corrector.